welcome. This is a, the first one of these that we're doing, of course, and it's about our practical prayer practices. And it's, I think, something that's really necessary. I know for me, um, for years, I was a Christian, like, I don't know, 20, 30 years or something, and really didn't know much about ways of prayer. I just had been told, you know, go in and pray. And I used to think, well, what's all that about? What am I supposed to do? And then people would say, oh, well, you just, you know, offer things to God and whatever's on your mind, and et cetera, et cetera. Anyhow, the, the long and the short of it is that I think there, that we can go through life as a Christian and we get to the point sometimes when we think, oh, gee, I'm meant to know and I don't know. And how can I say I don't know when you know, I've been a Christian for this long? So I don't know if any of you sort of fit into some of those categories, but I certainly did. And, and I'm still in a place where I want to learn more and other practices and actually practice the practice. That's part of it, I suppose. Mm. I'm only intending for this to go a maximum of, of one hour. It doesn't need to be any longer. Uh, you will get a chance to ask questions. So it's not about just simply me saying stuff and, and getting things happening. Uh, well, I really do appreciate your input and would love to have your input. So that would be, that would be great. Uh, as you've probably received it, and I hope you have received it, the, um, the, the layout for today, which just mm -hmm. sort of goes through at session one, examine and then introduction, etc. So that's pretty much what we're going to be following. And as a bit of an introduction, the key verses are there, which I think are quite profound. Mm. And they're things that have been profound for years, I think, right from, you know, Hebrew days, very early Hebrew days. And, you know, we hear a lot of uh, two Psalms are there as well. And then Lamentations, but there was a great deal of emphasis on trying to purify ourselves, I guess, or um, righteousness and, and those sorts of things. And the way to do that really is to find out from God, not just the rules and regulations, but, but having a relationship with God. Anyhow, the, the, the first Psalm, I just wanted to read that. That's 100, Psalm 139 verses 23 and 24. And it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And then Lamentations 3.40. Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. And then Psalm 26.2. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. So let's just offer this time to God in what would probably be a normal, formal prayer. We thank you, God, that you are ever present with us through our trials and tribulations, through our happy days and our, and our sad days, through all of life's pleasures, you are there. We really ask this morning that you can be with us in a more full way, a way in which we can not only give to you and appreciate what you've done for us, but we open our hearts for interaction, interaction from you. We want to be able to hear from you in whatever way you communicate whether it be through feelings, an unction, a, just a knowing, a peace, even a word. We ask that we might be receptive to you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So what do we think prayer is? And this is no, there's no right or wrong here. <laughs> it's just, what do you think prayer is? Just speak, because there's only a few of us. Um, what do you think it is? 
Any ideas? A conversation with our father. Yep. Conversation with our father. Mm -hmm. I think of prayer as a consciously being with God and, and being aware of God being with, with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Consciously being with God and aware of God. Okay. Any others? I know I've put you on the spot for a definition, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a fancy wancy <laughs> definition. That's really comforting because sometimes you don't, you haven't got the words. Yes. Sincere desire within you. Okay. Now, I think I got uh, most of that, Daphne. Thank you. So it's, it's about a being with God. So it doesn't have to be words. Is that what you were expressing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That, that's great. Yeah. Any other ideas on what you think prayer might be? I think it should be a two-way thing. Okay. So it's um, both a listening and um, speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or thinking. Two-way. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, between me and God and God and me. Uh -huh. Like a dialogue and not a monologue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Not yep. A lot, and it's not a shopping list either. Yeah, okay. Not a shopping list either. That's good. <laughs> Although I guess sometimes it might be, you know, if you've got quite a few things you're wanting to sort of dump on God. I've, I've been at that place sometimes where I've gone, okay, God, here you go. These are all the things that are happening at the moment. <laughs> I just want to, want to dump them on your shoulders, you know, figuratively speaking, of course. So any other um, thoughts? Here's another question then pertaining to prayer. Where do you think and I couldn't find other words of, of expressing this, but where do you think prayer starts and finishes? In other words, could just walking in nature, for instance, be a prayer? Or would you consider that to be maybe just walking in nature? Or maybe there's an additive to the walking in nature, such as walking in nature, contemplating its beauty and its creator. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't, anyhow, this, <laughs> what do you think? Is there a start and a finish to what prayer is? Sometimes. Just, sorry, go, go on, Pat. Yeah. Sometimes. I, I can go into a, um, a place in nature and it's like a cathedral to me. Um, I don't have to be in a building. Uh, uh, and it, I think um, God has presented to me often when I'm in the bush or in nature. Um, it, it hits me. <laughs> okay, so, you, that, so that hitting you is sort of like the awareness of it, I suppose. Yeah. I'm, I'm putting words into your mouth, but I hope yeah. they express what you yes. want to express. That's the prayer, whereas when you're unaware, is it not the prayer? I'm, I'm not sure. If, is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not conscious of it, I suppose, but um, I can't help but um, reflect on the creator when nature is, when I'm abound in nature. Yeah, okay. That's clear. Thank you. How about others? Do you think there's a beginning and an end to prayer? Where What is prayer and what isn't? <laughs> Anne, you look like you're about to say something. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to work out how to express this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually think that it it's not only, prayer isn't only the formal um, yes. um, sitting down and closing your eyes and, and um, being at peace and being with God. I think prayer can be um, like a little bit of a chat um, and it can happen, you know, I often, often when I'm looking out my kitchen window and doing the washing up <laughs> and I can see into my garden, um, often that, that triggers something, some sort of conversation and I, th I think that, that can be prayer too. Fabulous. Fabulous. That's good. So that's really um, 
a little bit lateral, I, I guess. Well, well, all of these are lateral. Walking in nature, I guess, is lateral too. Any other, any other thoughts on where prayer starts and finishes, or does it finish? <laughs> or is are we always in prayer? I I think in a way like we it's on pause because when you're somewhere like even driving down the other day. Uh, to Newcastle and there was clouds and there was some rainbow and and that led me to prayer with with God but then it didn't sort of end in a way I think it I think the the thoughts and the prayers and the spirit is ready within us to share with God and to listen to God when he's ready so I, I kind of feel it's a bit ongoing okay that's that's good that, i think you expressed that well i'm not even going to try and re-express that one <laughs> that that was great so does prayer have to be words do you think anybody this no, is for? No. Mm. i don't think so i think it can be an expression a feeling an emotion I think it could be size. Oh, okay. <laughs> can, you know, can you explain? Um, just, I, I think it could be um, we, in times of, of happiness or sadness and both size can fit in with both of those. And you think, you, you sit back and say, ah, oh, thanks, God. Oh, those sorts of size. I was S I Z E, and I'm thinking, <laughs> no, no, S I G H. Got it, got it. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. I, 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 I appreciate what you're saying there. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Any other like, ways that? Sorry, Jess, was it? Oh well, like I sort of said before, I think you know, prayer can be, <clears throat> um, you know, just becoming aware of God's presence or. No, noticing what God might be doing or how God is moving, you know, around me or within me or um, or moving to an acceptance of something rather than a fighting against and sort of, so sort of being with God, you know, in that situation or, um, yeah, or seeking to allow God to change my heart towards something so yeah, things like that, they're 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 quite wordless. I mean, words can occur to you as it's happening or a word can sort of prompt you to or me to um open to that or move in that direction. But for me a lot of it happens wordlessly. <laughs> and then you might okay. try to put words later. <laughs> right, right. Yes, no, that that I hear what you're saying. That that's great. Yeah. Is there um I know we talk a lot about embodiment of the spirit, the spirit of God embodied in us and in the world and in others and around us. Do you think there's a form of awareness within our bodies that can be a prayer if expressed through movement, say, for instance? What do people think about that? Sometimes I find the act of, of like getting on my knees or even bowing to the floor just helping me to, yeah, I guess embody that prayer of humbling myself to God or just sort of lovingly mm. submitting and accepting yes. or being available. Yeah. Yep. Um, especially, I, I guess, when the mind is, is having a hard time doing that. So if you can do it with your body, it helps to have that, create that attitude within Yes, yes. So, in in other words, what our body does it, um, can also can be representative. And I know with th kinesiology and um, through uh, neuro linguistic programming, they've they've studied um, actions. I don't want to get too sort of technical here, but but people's uh, physical attitudes and actions, and they go both ways apparently. So we can, in for instance, if someone is feeling sad, they'll often look down and, and you know, their eyes will drop and their, um, you know, their whole demeanour sort of goes down. Um, we can induce that as well. So we, it goes both ways. So we can actually bring that on apparently by that bodily action. We can start to say contemplate more or feel more if we we 
drop our head. I think possibly, and it's only possibly because I can't prove it in any way, but um, the early Christians with their, their actions through prayer, you know, like, um, you know, supplication, hands up, or, you know, praise, or, you know, lowering their head, or um, all of those things, they did without probably thinking, but realising that was inducing a particular reaction or feeling or emotion. So that's a possibility too. Okay, well, what I'm hearing is that there doesn't seem to be a definite line between the beginning of prayer, where prayer starts and where prayer finishes. Would I be correct in saying that, that we would, would we all agree or would, is there somebody here that would think that there's, it's a, it's a more confined thing, a start and a finish. Okay. I'm not getting anybody saying no. So I'm presuming <laughs> that you're, you're in agreement there. Well, well the, the scriptures tell us pray without ceasing, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, and you wonder how you could do that if it was a formal prayer that was just <laughs> spouting <laughs> off on a monologue to God. It'd be a bit, <laughs> you know, how could you do that? You certainly couldn't do it through the night or you certainly, you know, you would be exhausted. If you, if you had to do it that in that way. So, yeah, that, that's a good point, Pat. Well, Ignatius, uh, let's, let's just sort of consider a little bit about Ignatius. Ignatius, it was interesting for him. He was a bit of a womanizer. You may have read some things about Ignatius, and um, I'm sure you'll just agree with me when you, <laughs> if you have already. He was uh, in the army and he was fighting a war, um, and he was a very, I guess, as I said, a womanizer. He was out there and he was doing everything. He was very proud and he was very um, a Full typical. Of testosterone. I think so. I think you're right there, and that's what he was. He was a he was a, a man's man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, he he had an injury. He he got a very severe injury apparently um, at where he's all the bones in his leg were really crushed. And in those days, they didn't have any anaesthetic. So they did some operations without anaesthetic. And, you know, I think that that in itself would have been painful. But he was recovering with, I think it was his sister-in-law. And she had numerous books on her bookshelf. And he started reading. He Prior to that, he really, I guess, hadn't considered much about Christianity, although he had was probably, in those days, he would have been nominally Christian. Um, because we're looking at the the late 1400s, early 1500s. So he started reading and he was amazed and he had what, <clears throat> excuse me, what I guess could be classified as a conversion or he had um, an epiphany or he had, he was illuminated. He was, he came to an awareness that God existed in a much more profound way than what he had thought that God had been or what he presumed God was prior to that. And from this day onwards, really, he, he wanted to investigate and he had such a passion because that passion that he had in him, uh, which was inbuilt into him, then transferred into his Christianity and he was so passionate about wanting others to learn things about God and that God was there and God was close and God was, could be in you and God was, was everything. So he just became overwhelmed with uh, with all these godly things and started to teach. And as he was passionate, others wanted to learn also. So they wanted to learn how, how to be able to have this passion for God that he had. And one of the things that he, oh, let me just say before we go on to the exam itself, this was the days just immediately before the Reformation and then in the very early stages of the Protestant Reformation. So I'd like to, I, my thoughts on it, and there are numerous thoughts, and when you read different scholars, you'll get different perspectives. But I, I actually went and interviewed some, um, some people who were, were, you know, following this way of Ignatius, um, and they were, I wanted to find out what they thought. They're Catholics still. Their thoughts were pretty similar to mine, and that really... 
the Counter-Reformation or the Catholic Counter-Reformation utilised the methodologies of Ignatius and not the other way around. So Ignatius had realisations and, uh, and I guess, a passion that was exclusive of any uh, Protestant thing or Counter-Reformation thing. So he was neutral in, in the ground. But what did happen was the popes of that day saw what he was doing and saw the success of what he was doing with the people. And he did, by the way, stand up against some of the, the things that the popes were doing. So he was, I guess, leaning towards the, the Reformation, the Protestant Reformation, but at the same time wanted to remain Catholic. So he, um, he was used his methodologies were used and they sent missionaries out to South America and other places and utilised his ways of doing things because of the passion. But it wasn't the other way around. So you can't, we can't sort of go, well, because he's Catholic, what he's suggesting here doesn't apply to us. It does because it's, it's neutral and it's generic and it's not specifically Catholic. It's for all of us. Now, Ignatius may not have been the originator of this method that we're going to be looking at in just a few minutes. He might well have been uh, become aware of it at some point, although it doesn't seem that we can locate it in history at this time in, and place. We, our scholars are a little bit um, vague when it comes to where this came from. He explains as, it, as if it's his awareness, and it may well be, and I don't know whether... That, I don't think it's important, to be quite honest, whether he is the originator of this methodology or not, because I think it fits so easily and so well and it, uh, and it works for people. And this was foundational to some of the missionary work that was done um, overseas. He, he was Spanish, but uh, there was a lot of, a lot of travel that, the, um, that his people did, or his followers did. So that's sort of the background of Ignatius. What we're going to be looking at today is examine. And examine is a way of looking at your day or even a few hours. Uh, a lot of the people suggest, a lot of people that follow this uh, path or utilise this practice say you can do it twice a day. And certainly if your day is pretty... I guess, uh, confronting or challenging, then twice a day would be worthwhile. But you could also do it just once a day, and that's, that's okay. I tend to do this most regularly in the evenings before I go to sleep, and it's a reflection of just the day. So it can be done. We're going to do it in a bit of a formal way, but you might like to, after you've practised it in a formal way, loosen it up a bit for yourself because... You can adapt it in, in lots of ways. What we'll do is we'll look at our day. So we'll probably take ourselves back to yesterday for, for us. Um, that's if you so choose, because it'll give you more to look at. And you just run it through, I guess, like a video. You know, when we had videotapes and things and you sort of fast forwarded them and <laughs> you can do that. Well, you can fast forward it to wherever you like, whatever stands out. So when we, when we do it, you'll just go, just put it on fast forward, try and pick the beginning of the day and then observe yourself in the day. So observe what you were doing, what you were thinking, what you were feeling, what you heard others say and what you heard yourself say, what was, what was happening around you. And then allow it just naturally your thoughts or the rewind to just stop at certain points. They might stop at points that were uncomfortable. And that's okay. Uh, might stop at points that were just the most enjoyable, um, wonderful experience. And that's good too. It doesn't really matter. It might stop at an, an insignificant little point that you go, I wonder where, why I've, noticed that i wonder why and 
it's in this wondering why that the examine has its power. So when we look at that, those places, and then we sit there with God and we say, as uh, we've just been talking, um, as Pat was saying and, and Anne was saying, well, you all were saying it actually, <laughs> that allowing God to speak into that situation. And you can be informal and you can say in your mind, okay, God, what, what are you showing me here? What is this about? What do you want me to learn from this? Is this something that I could improve upon? Is this something that you're wanting to just show me because you love people and you love the world? Um, whatever it might be, and all is okay. But it, we need to, at that point, just stop and listen and feel and just be receptive to what God's input is going to be into that situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. That's good. And it is pretty easy, actually. It's not hard. <laughs> it's about just giving us ourselves the time to do it. So Ignatius actually encouraged people to talk to, to Jesus as, as a friend. And that's sort of, I guess, what we're doing here. Now, the formal way of doing things is that the, this sort of follows a normal pattern. We become aware of God's presence, and I'll guide you through these, these parts, and we'll have some background music going as well. Then we review the day, which is what I was just talking about. And then through that day, we notice emotions that are happening, whatever it might be, as we've discussed. And then sometimes we either choose one feature or we might choose a few. There might be certain things that you need to, other things you need to look at. That's okay. It doesn't have to be just one. And then at the end, again, I'll lead you through some of this, that we'll be looking forward to tomorrow. And you'll be asking God what you want to carry through into the following day, which can be today and also tomorrow. So are we quite happy with that so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to um, ask you now to get yourself comfortable and we'll get ourselves into that place where you can be nice and warm and cosy and you're not going to be getting cold because this will go for about 20 minutes, just, just roughly. And you can, if you like, you can, I, I'm going to suggest that you're in a position that's comfortable, but that is not going to send you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> because it can be. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to sleep there, Graham. You've got to put it more upright, I think. <laughs> because, you know, what we, we are trying to do something. We, we will be in a very relaxed state, of course, but we don't, really, we don't want to doze off. Um, so to the best of your ability, if you can keep, keep yourself know. just cosy and awake, <laughs> however that might be. Oh, well, just give him a nudge there, Daff, if he does. <laughs> Um, and so part of that is just, I guess, looking after ourselves. So you do need to be comfortable. You do need to stay awake and then you can do whatever you want to do there on in you. If you lay down and you know that you're not going to go to sleep, that's fine. If you need to sit up, that's fine. Also, if you want to close your eyes, go right ahead. If you want to stare at a candle or something like that, go right ahead. It's up to you. I'll probably be closing my eyes. You may see me on the screen a little bit. Um, there will also be a, 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 a scene that will be going past on the uh, on the screen. <laughs> what, what am I trying to say? There, there'll be like scenery. So you'll be able to just drift off with that scenery if you want your eyes open and just watch the screen. That's something you could do also. Okay. Well, bring yourself into that place. As you're sitting there in that place or laying down if you so choose. 
just become aware of God's presence around you. And maybe also in you. Become aware of your breathing. The God-given light inside us. might even be able to feel energy running through your body. Now God given life. The Holy Spirit through us. Just take some time now to go back to yesterday. Yesterday morning. Yesterday morning when your day began. Now ask God to be present with you as you begin now to review your day. Take notice of anything that just springs to your attention.
just gently. Take your thoughts back. events. That happened yesterday or even this morning. And just sit and ask God, what do you want to bring my attention to? And listen and receive. emotions are being stirred. What is God directing you to? and those feelings those emotions and those awarenesses and what you've heard and experienced for this time speaking with you and showing you things. Thank God for letting you feel. And begin to look towards the rest of today.
and ask God, what would you, God, like me to take into today? You may wish to say thank you. You may wish to say until we meet again. So with all of those thoughts and those emotions, and all of that love and that caring that God has just given you, that you've received. Begin now to draw your attention back into the room. You can bring those thoughts and feelings with you but also bring your awareness back in to the room. If your eyes are closed, they may need to be open. You might want to just move your maybe fingers and toes. Just move slightly to know that you're back in the here and now. Welcome back, everybody. That was only a very short um, practice of the examine. And you've probably gathered already, you could have it as long as you like or as short as you like. It's just simply a matter of doing it. <laughs> and what I think is amazing is that God always turns up. <laughs> it's not just about me. And I think that's fantastic because it's just such an easy thing to do. And it can be such a completion for for our day or even for the beginning of another day, it sets us in the right place. So how did some of you feel or find that exercise, that practice? I'll unmute you. How did you find that? Any comments or? I found it really very good um, to think back over at that day and just to have those pauses and and just we race through the days and days are so quick and next thing like here it is a week since I was going down to Newcastle and to just stop and reflect and ask God to show you in that time, I thought was mm. wonderful. Mm. Thanks, Lenore. That's great. That's great. Any other comments? I um, am. Yeah, no, um, I found my, my, my morning was too much of a blur yesterday. I was still coming out of the, <laughs> mm -hmm. the headache and fog and stuff. Um, so I didn't try too hard to that, but I had um, 
I, I sort of I sort of went through through later and I was there for a bit then I, I was trying to sort of go on and, and I kept sort of seeming to be stuck in this thing in the middle of the day and and I started to sort of like stop being stuck there and move on then I was like oh no why maybe that <laughs> you're trying to show me something there <laughs> and I didn't yep. think there was anything there but I, I stayed with it and then I realized that yeah God I hadn't understood how God I hadn't recognized how God was with me at that time and uh and so stopping and um the yeah, following through it just now showed me it was uh, and it was very moving how mm. God was with me and then and then when you said something about receiving um you know in light of of what what we've seen or what is God yeah it was um it was one of those very valuable surprises mm. you know that that wouldn't have come unless there was that stopping and and allowing God to direct my awareness and receptivity. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you Thank for sharing you. that. Yeah. And, and that's one of the amazing things about this practice, I think, because it catches us unawares. Mm. It's like, um, you know, and Lenore, you were saying how we can just sort of like go through the day and, and then, Next thing we know, it's, you know, weeks have gone past. And it is an interesting thing that sometimes hidden in our days are things that, just like you're, you're expressing, Jess, that we're unaware of or that we can learn from or that we can be blessed by or that we can... And all of the above, I think, is a blessing to know that, that in that place, however insignificant or peculiar or different or whatever it is god is there and god is is functioning with and for us and to me that's that's wonderful yeah. anyone else want to share an experience well my day started off pretty disastrous because um, <laughs> the two toilets in our house the only two <laughs> went to foot oh. but, but um <laughs> It the the day ended because of the kindness of others. Mm. Uh, we went to a plumber place and they spent a long time talking to us about how to fix these things. And they didn't get any money or anything for it. They were just challenged by the difficulties that we faced and spent some time with us. Um, and then later on, I. Um, wanted to make an inquiry about how you join these webinars, if that's how you <laughs> pronounce them. Yes. <laughs> I thought you'd have to have a new app or something. Um, and the kindness of people explaining to me. So in my reflection, it was all about kindness of the day. Wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's lovely. That's lovely, yeah. And it can surprise us too that, you yes. know, those, those things and you go, oh, okay. <laughs> That's lovely, Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to share anything while we're still here? Well, I think what I might do is leave it at that. It's about roughly 10 to. And as I said, we, we, these, these aren't long sessions, but I'm going to encourage you to practice this through the week from time to time and uh, give it a go and just see what comes up for you because whatever comes up on that, in that pause, where that, where that place is paused, <laughs> as Jesse experienced, there's something. So just stay with it when, it, when the videotape pauses. Um, and and see what it is and and just as again just be blessed by what it is that you discover there and even if it's god sort of telling us or in a sense reprimanding us i've got to say that god is really the most gentle reprimander i've ever encountered <laughs> so if it's a if it's a a reminder that you know for something that you might not have done too terrifically you know, don't be too disturbed because God won't be harsh on you. <laughs> God will be so gentle and give you ways around it. So, uh, so let's do what we're comfortable with as a formal prayer now. 
in closing. And I want to thank you all very much for participating and for sharing today too, because it's good to be able to just interact, I think, and not simply just be spoken at, um, which I guess is a bit of an indication of what we're trying to talk about <laughs> with the examine anyhow, <laughs> the listening side of it and the participation side. So thank you. Thank you, God. Ah, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So let's just let's just give it to God now. Thank you, God, for being here for us today. Thank you, God, that you've been with each and every one of us. Thank you, God, that we can listen to you and you can speak to us in whatever way that is. Thank you, God, that we give you time to be able to express yourself to us. Thank you, God, for all of our blessings. Thank you, God, that we have this simple practice that we can implement in our own lives. So in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. So have a go and we'll come back next week. Those of you that can make it, I hope you can all make it. Uh, we may have some others with us that couldn't make it today. And um, if you've got any questions during the week, hopefully you've all got my contact details. So please either ring me or email me or, or whatever. And I think the main thing to remember is to just have a go. And however it works. So you've got the layout on the sheet. You can follow it to the detail if you like, or you can slightly adapt it for your own way of doing things. So God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.